Hey, hey, what is up guys, it is Orbin Hardware and in today's video we're gonna build the ultimate budget 1080p gaming PC for March 2021 using the following parts. I'm gonna run you guys through the entire building process step by step, how I put this PC build together, then we're gonna test it out in a bunch of popular games in both 1080p max settings but also at 1440p resolution. We're also gonna take a look at what kind of frame rate you can expect having ray tracing turned on as well now if you want to build this pc too all parts i'm using are linked up down below now before we get into the video hey my name is robin and on this channel i turn you into a pc builder expert and so if that is something you're interested in smash the like button down below for the youtube algorithm and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and let me know what price target we should cover next and speaking of pricing this machine will cost you right about eight to nine hundred dollars using the following when parts now at this budget you will be able to play all games at 1080p at max settings and 1440p at medium settings with great frame rate but even 4k gaming at low settings is also a possibility i would take a sneak peek at the performance shows that we're able to run all games tested with very good results but yeah we're gonna dive into the gaming performance as I mentioned earlier in much greater detail right after we completed the build. Anyway inside this machine we find a 3rd gen 6 core Ryzen, an RTX 3060 graphics card as well as a super fast and not to drive 16 gigs of RAM. Everything housed inside this tiny high airflow coal link case. So let's start with the base of today's build, the CPU, RAM and motherboard and for today's build I ended up picking the Gigabyte B450M DS3H coming in at just $74 which makes it one of the cheapest B450s you can buy right now. Now what I especially like with this particular board is that despite its low price tag you're not really sacrificing any valuable features. You've got everything you need here to make this PC build as future proof as possible. And by spending less money on the motherboard will allow us to get away with a better graphics card and GPU without breaking our budget. And the graphics card and the processor are the two most important uh, components for higher frame rates. So time to install our processor and for today's build we got a Ryzen 5 3600 coming in at $199. Now this is a 6 core CPU with SMT which means that it got 12 threads. It has a base clock of 3.8 and 4.2 GHz turbo. Having a look at the CPU gaming performance we see that the Ryzen 3600 is a very compelling CPU. Thanks to Zen 2's low latency, high clock speed and high IPC, the $199 3600 600 as you can see doesn't disappoint. In order to install our CPU heatsink we first need to remove this retention frame and now we can install the processor in its socket. And first we want to open up the metal arm. Secondly you want to locate what's looking like a golden triangle on the processor. And there's happened to be an exact triangle printed on the motherboard socket as well. And so what you want to do is you want to simply turn the CPU so that these two uh, triangles match up. Then you simply drop the processor in to the socket and then you gently move the metal arm all the way down until it locks in place and voila our CPU is installed. Now inside the CPU box also comes an included heatsink or a cooler. Installing the cooler is also very simple. Position the CPU cooler so that the four spring screws on the heatsink align with the four holes on the backplate. Turn each spring screw half a turn clockwise to ensure that the spring screw makes a connection with the backplate. Follow a diagonal pattern across the CPU cooler like this to further tightening each spring screw with a full turn. And with all spring screws connected to the backplate, tighten them until you feel resistance. Lastly, yeah, you don't want to forget to connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. For system RAM we're gonna go with the Corsair Vengeance RGB. Because of its stellar quality and Ryzen compatibility, now this has a rated speed of 3200MHz 
and with these speeds we are hitting the so-called sweet spot for the Ryzen CPU. And it happens to be that the faster clocked RAM kit will give you a frame rate boost versus a slower clock kit as we can see from this image here. And this is simply because of the way that the CPU and RAM communicate with each other. Now installing these bad boys is as simple as it looks and we're gonna wanna populate the gray slot so simply pull back the toggle for the second and the fourth dim slot and plug them in just like so. So let's go ahead and install our storage device which according to Kingston is about 35% faster than a spinning hard drive and so you can say goodbye to loading screens with this one. In order to install this we have to locate the M.2 slot which we find right here and so what you want to do is you want to loosen this tiny screw just like so then gently slide the M.2 unit into the socket with this little notches here on the opposite side of the CPU cooler just like so. Then finally take the little screw and hold it down and screw it down until it stops. Now we can go ahead and move our whole base uh, of our build and install it in our case. And in this build I ended up picking the Colink Citadel Mesh RGB for $99. Now this tiny looking case comes with not just one but three 120mm RGB fans which will give us excellent cooling for our GPU. Thanks to this perforated front we can expect plenty of energy ventilation. The tamper glass side window is mounted on hinges so we can take a look at our beautiful system whenever we want to. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta have to prep the case and in order to get access to the inside all we need to do is grabbing on to this small handle to open up the tamper glass side window. Next up we gotta wanna install our IO shield that we find inside our motherboard box. This one goes in for the back of the case with these circular ports here located at the bottom. Now with the CPU cooler in installed we can just grab onto the CPU fan and slide the whole assembly into place. We're gonna use the screws that comes provided by Colink and so with the board installed before we move on to power supply and graphics, now is a good time to connect the chassis cables that takes care of the front audio and USB. Let's start with USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. The connector is located at the bottom of the motherboard. Next in line we have this USB connector and this one goes to a connector that is located right next to the USB 3 connector. Moving on to front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly we have the front panel connectors and you find this on the lower right side. So with that done let's go ahead and install our power supply and I chose this 550 watt unit from Corsair. This is a compact and silent and high quality PSU with 80 plus bronze efficiency certification. Now you want to make sure you got the fan facing downwards then gently slide it into place and secure it. Now we're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring before installing our graphics and first up we got the 24 pin power for our motherboard and this one goes to a connector on the mid right side. Next we got the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Now it is time to install our graphics and for today's build we find the brand new Ampere based RTX 3060, this one specifically from MSI using their gaming X cooler. Now the 3060 is based on the brand new GA106 CPU and so it's got plenty of CUDA cores and ray tracing cores with enough power to run most games at 1080p max settings and 1440p at medium settings. In terms of specifications it comes with 12 gigs of G6 memory. Looking at its performance then against other popular picks we can see that the 3060 holds up great with performance matching the good old RTX 3070 Super. Now we need to talk about the pricing. This card has an MSRP of $329 and this is what I think the card is worth and I don't think you guys should spend much more than that. However right now the prices on G GPUs have spiked through the roof because of low current supply and although we hope the situation gets better any day now, I know guys many of you want to build a PC right now, I still don't think you should spend much more than what Nvidia is pricing this GPU and so $339 
is around what it should sell for and remember it shouldn't sell for several hundred dollars more anyway plug in the graphics card and take this uh, pcie cable and plug it in to our gpu just like so and what is left to do now is to flip the case around whack on the side panel and we have officially completed our eight to nine hundred dollar gaming pc build so let's fire up some games and find out how it performs all right so on your screen now guys we are looking at the performance numbers that i've gathered from today's build and I ended up running uh, 15 games in both 1080p and 1440p resolution and overall I am quite impressed with the performance that you can expect for this kind of money although again that is if you can find the 3060 for $330 Anyway, let's dive a bit deeper with some of the games tested and let's first take a look at Death Stranding and let's start with 1080p uh, with an average of 137 FPS with 1% low at around 90 FPS running at max settings, that is the highest possible settings, you can expect silky smooth frame rates on this PC, I'm jumping to 1440p with same settings, we're seeing around 99 FPS on average and around 84 FPS at 1% low. Moving on to CSGO, once again we're starting with 1080p and this time I'm using competitive settings here. And this results in about 230 FPS on average, jumping to 1440p using the same graphic settings here. Again competitive settings results in about 232 FPS. Doom Eternal is next up and once again I am picking the highest possible settings here. This one is called Ultra Nightmare at 1080p and this results in about 157 FPS on average and approximately 110 FPS at 1% low. At 1440p we saw 113 FPS on average using the Ultra Nightmare graphics settings. Moving on to Overwatch and here I'm picking Ultra settings for this title uh, which results in about 161 FPS on average and around 180 FPS at 1% low at 1080p. At 1440p we're still averaging around 130 FPS and around 95 FPS at 1% low using the epic settings once again. Valorant runs incredibly well with an average of over 220 FPS and looking at the settings I went for everything maxed out running at 1080p. At 1440p things yeah didn't change much, we're still almost at 200 FPS on average. Call of Duty Warzone at 1080p runs at around 93 FPS on average and this is using max settings with DX12 and ray tracing turned off. At 1440p we saw around 77 FPS on average once again with ray tracing turned off. Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing activated using the medium ray tracing settings resulted in around 64 FPS on average and 55 FPS at 1% low. Whereas in 1440p with ray tracing set to medium and thanks to DLSS ultra performance settings we were able to reach 73 FPS on average which yeah is pretty impressive i have to say once again all pc components can be found down below now we now have an official discord server up and running and if you want to become a part of this community ask questions either to me or to any other awesome people on this channel you want to go ahead and join the discord server today link can be found down below now watch either of these two videos and i will see you guys in the next video